Hello friends. Till now in this course we have learned about different types of contact and we have learned about linear contact. So in case of linear contact we don't define any friction value. It means the contact between two bodies is frictionless. But in real life there is always some friction between the bodies and whenever there is a friction between two bodies it is called non-linear contact. First let's learn about what is friction contact what are different parameters to define it then we will go to hypermesh and understand what are different ways of defining the friction between the bodies so here you can see in this example we are going to consider that these two surfaces have friction between them here you can see so when you define the friction contact between the bodies basically we need to define a friction coefficient so the friction coefficient can be of two types. One is called static friction. Second one is called kinetic friction. So static means when this body is at rest state and let's say we apply a force to this. Then we need a minimum force so that this body can start moving. And at that point the friction is called static friction. And when this body is moving that friction is called kinetic friction. So static means body is at rest, kinetic means body is in motion. So here is a basic illustration how this force is going to work. Let's say this body is at rest right now. So here you can see we have a body and we are going to pull it, pull or push. When we are going to pull it, it means the friction force always occurs in the negative direction or opposite direction. When we, are, when we are going to pull it, the force will be in left direction, you can see. So when a body rests or slides on the surface, the friction force is always parallel to the surface. So why this friction happens? It is because of molecular interaction between the bodies. We have two surfaces that are molecules. Because of these molecules, when we rub these two bodies or we can say relative motion, there will be interaction between the molecules. And because of that there will be friction and because of that friction there will be some loss of contact pressure or contact force due to the heating or dissipation of force. So the value of kinetic and static friction is calculated from this formula that is called F equal to mu n. So in case of kinetic this, is should, this should be always less than equal to mu s n and in case of kinetic friction this F equal to mu k n. So generally in most of the cases we define the value of kinetic friction because there is always a relative motion because of the moving parts. The value of this kinetic friction varies between 0 to 1 and most general value is 0 0.2, 0 0.3 whenever two metals are in contact or we can take up to 0 0.4. Now there are some values that has been determined by the experiment. So you can see whenever we have a rubber on a concrete in the first case you can see this value somewhere close to 1 this is 0 0.8 and we have when we have metal to metal steel on steel this is 0 0.57 and when we have copper on steel 0 0.36 like this. So you can see whenever the value of friction is very high close to 1 it means there is a very high friction between two surfaces and when this value is very less it means the friction is very less between two surfaces. Now let's go to hypermesh and understand how can we apply the friction contact between the bodies. So in hypermesh we have some options to define the friction between the bodies. One is we can directly define in the settings of the contact we can directly insert the value of friction. Another way is if we want to insert some more parameter along with the friction force, we can create a property and then define the values in that property. So let's say I will open up a file here. In your contact, let's say I will open up this file auto contact we have earlier created. So here I will go to this group option, click on interaction between the components. Here you can see we have defined the card image tie. So whenever there is a tie there won't be any friction because tie means glue or fixed. So it means we need to define the proper property. 
So here I will go to contact here first click on yes and when you go to this property here property option click on this arrow property type we have three options property type property id and static friction coefficient one way is we can directly define the value of friction here click on static friction coefficient here mu1 mu1 means value of mu let's say 0 0.3 enter and all other parameters are same like slave surface master surface orientation search distance etc so this is a very direct way of defining the static friction another way is let's say i want to define some more parameter along with this then we need to create a property here you will see property id if i select this property type we select we find this option like slide stick freeze etc here i will go to property id and here you will see pid that is property id click click on this unspecified click on property so right now we had not defined the property so click on cancel first we need to create a property then we are going to call that property here so i will make a right click create go to property give it name like this is friction or any name relevant name enter in the card image we need to give the card image that is called p -cont. so let's see where is the p -cont here this is p -cont here which is called p contact click on yes now in this p -cont, first we can define a gap between them let it remain the default here you will see stiffness in this stiffness we have hard or soft let's take it as auto here you will see mu1 and mu2 mu1 is kinetic friction and mu2 is static friction we can define any single value or we can also define both values let's say this is 0 0.2 press enter after here you will find some more option like separation then friction etc if you want to know more about this p -cont property press h from the keyboard h for help there you will see hypermesh documentation search here p -cont. p -cont here press enter so in this search you need to go to p -cont optistruct you can also use the filter here optistruct go to p -cont. here you can see meaning of all the parameters that we use if you go to the bottom you will see that pid then gpad stiffness the meaning of this so you can read it so you can read everything here okay so mu1 you can see mu1 is basically static friction and mu2 is the kinetic friction and you can see clearance then separation you will see friction elastic slip so again these are more depth properties you can read about them by yourself and by default we take the auto option auto means the software automatically going to calculate the values according to the situation here you can see how can we define the properties here everything is written here so you can also learn about this linear penalty method which is used during the analysis for the contact algorithm here so you can read about them by yourself so let's go to hypermesh so this mu1 is basically the static friction mu2 is the kinetic so let's say this is 0 0.2 okay make sure that static friction is always greater than the kinetic friction it can be equal or greater it never less than the kinetic friction so once we create the property of friction we need to apply this property to this contact so go to this contact here go to this pid click on this pid now you can see friction is highlighting click on this click ok now you can see the friction properties highlighted now we can select the master and slave let's say master is surface 2 and this one is surface 1 we can define more parameters like adjust value no or auto we can by default we can take auto search distance let's say i want up to 2 in the disk kit i will i will select surface to surface and in the track i want small sliding so these are basically all the properties 
that we used to define when we define contact in hypermesh.